This is a picture of mirror ear. The external ear collects sound from the surroundings. It directs them to the ear canal. The ear canal carries sounds to the ear drum. The, the sound from the ear canal makes the ear drum vibrate. The vibration are passed on to the inner ear. In each ear, in the inner ear, change the vibration to, to electrical symbols. These signals are passed on to the brain. Thanks! The anatomy of our hearing or auditory system is extremely complex, but can be broadly divided into two parts, one being called peripheral and the other central. The peripheral hearing system consists of three parts which are the outer ear, the middle ear and the inner ear. The outer ear consists of the pinna, also called the auricle, ear canal and eardrum. The middle ear is a small, air-filled space containing three tiny bones called the malleus, incus and stapes but collectively called the ossicles. The malleus connects to the eardrum linking it to the outer ear and the stapes, smallest bone in the body, connects to the inner ear. The inner ear has both hearing and balance organs. The hearing part of the inner ear and is called the cochlea which comes from the Greek word for snail because of its distinctive coiled shape. The cochlea, which contains many thousands of sensory cells, called hair cells, is connected to the central hearing system by the hearing or auditory nerve. The cochlea is filled with special fluids which are important to the process of hearing. The central hearing system consists of the auditory nerve and an incredibly complex pathway through the brain stem and onward to the auditory cortex of the brain. How do we hear? The physiology of hearing, just like its anatomy, is very complex indeed and is best understood by looking at the role played by each part of our hearing system. Sound waves, which are really vibrations in the air around us, are collected by the pinna on each side of our head and are funneled into the ear canals. These sound waves make the eardrum vibrate. The eardrum is so sensitive to sound vibrations in the ear canal that it can detect even the faintest sound as well as replicating even the most complex of sound vibration patterns. The eardrum vibrations caused by sound waves move the chain of tiny bones, the ossicles, malleus, incus and stapes in the middle ear transferring the sound vibrations into the cochlea of the inner ear. This happens because the last of the three bones in this chain, the stapes, sits in a membrane-covered window in the bony wall which separates the middle ear from the cochlea of the inner ear. As the stapes vibrates, it makes the fluids in the cochlea move in a wave-like manner, stimulating the microscopically small hair cells. Remarkably, the hair cells in the cochlea are tuned to respond to different sounds based on their pitch or frequency of sounds. 
High-pitched sounds will stimulate hair cells in the lower part of the cochlea and low-pitched sounds in the upper part of the cochlea. What happens next is even more remarkable because, when each hair cell detects the pitch or frequency of sound to which it's tuned to respond, it generates nerve impulses which travel instantaneously along the auditory nerve. These nerve impulses follow a complicated pathway in the brainstem before arriving at the hearing centers of the brain, the auditory cortex. This is where the streams of nerve impulses are converted into meaningful sound. All of this happens within a tiny fraction of a second, almost instantaneously after sound waves first enter our ear canals. It is very true to say that, ultimately, we hear with our brain.